Hey y'all, I'm James, Education and Outreach Coordinator with Eagle River Watershed Council. Today we're gonna to learn about turning this 55 gallon Coca-Cola Zero Drum into a rain collection device called a rain barrel. Rain barrels are often listed in water plans and here in our county as opportunities to conserve water and to use untreated water on your outdoor water uses. Up until 2016, it was actually illegal to harvest the rain. That was considered state property and was going. it was considered to affect um, downstream junior and senior water rights users. But in a little before 2016, Colorado State University conducted a study and showed that these rain barrels were not going to make a difference into the water balance that and was not going to affect water rights holders. So now, today, we're going to learn how to convert these that you have at home into something that you can use to water your lawns. Rain harvesting is the technique of collecting water during a precipitation event and storing it to be used at a later date. Here in Colorado, that also means that it needs to be used on the same property and it needs to be used outside. Rain barrels here in the state of Colorado, as denoted by House Bill 16-1005, um, there's a lot of specific rules and one of those rules is that it has to be a sealed container and partially due to um, water quality concerns and mosquito concerns. Um, it needs to be located above ground. It needs to be located outside on a residential property. Um, apartments can have, condominiums can have these rain barrels, but the total building needs to have less than four residences. So my condo, there are six residences under one continuous roof. That means we're not allowed to have a rain barrel on our property. If there were four units, that would be a different story. There's still, the, the entire building can only have a total of two rain barrels holding up to 110 gallons of water per building. So your single family home, you could have two rain barrels holding up to 110 gallons of water. My entire building, if it had four units, could hold 110 gallons in two rain barrels at a time. Um, as I said, the water must be used on the same property that it's collected and it must be used outside. There are questions that rose of, well, could I water my indoor plants or could I water my vegetable garden in my greenhouse? And the answer is no. The law is interpreted to say that it can only be used to water outdoor lawns, plants, gardens, um, irrigation, and that would not include indoor plants and that would not include plants that are inside a greenhouse as that would technically be inside. So I think you might already know this because you are interested in rain barrels and you probably signed up for our rain barrel workshop, but there are a lot of benefits to using rainwater harvested from our Colorado skies. First of all, our water tends to be of very good quality. Um, it doesn't rain very frequently, so sometimes there are concerns of what's on our roof, but overall our water quality here, our rainwater quality is very good. Um, the rain typically is a little bit of, has a little bit of nitrogen in it, which causes a lot of greening and helps beautify our lawns. Um, it's also not chlorinated, which is really great for plants. Plants don't love chlorinated water. Um, it'll save you a bunch of money. Water treatment's very expensive. Our water here in Eagle County can be quite pricey, um, especially if we're watering Kentucky bluegrass or all of our vegetables outside um, that can consume a lot of water. Um, so this will help save a little bit of money. Um, you also don't need a whole lot of roof or a whole lot of rain to collect a good amount of water. I don't exactly remember the statistic, but it's pretty promising to see how how much water we can fill one of these with um, in pretty small rain events at, and a pretty normal sized roof. Um, another thing that's really great, um, the supplies are free and even in times of drought like we're in right now, it's raining. We get monsoons pretty much every afternoon. You know, we're filming this video because we canceled our event due to the threat of rain. Mind you, it didn't really rain, at least not in the town of Eagle, but um, it rains during drought and you can collect that rain and use it, um, use it on your garden at a little bit later when they really need it. Um, another interesting statistic, um, which adds to the benefits of these, these are more beneficial when you can use less water overall. Kentucky bluegrass uses, requires 36 inches of precipitation a year to stay green and to stay beautiful. And here in Eagle, we average about 11 inches, a little bit less than 11 inches per year of rain. So we have to supplement a lot of water use for those grasses. And the best way to get the most out of these rain barrels and the most out of our water here is to really choose the right landscaping. Before we dive into actual construction, just a quick notes on safety. Um, it is recommended that you wear safety glasses and safety gloves when drilling into, especially into your gutter, into the metal, but definitely um, consider using it when you're drilling into the plastic. And also when it's done, do not drink the water. This water is not meant for consumption. It is meant for only outdoor use and that only in, that includes your lawn, um, any sort of vegetable garden outside, any sort of plants in your landscape. Um, but do not drink this. Do not feed it to your animals. Um, there's a lot of contaminants that can come from our roofs, from bird droppings, from dust, from particles. Um, it just doesn't, it's not recommended to drink. In fact, it's not allowed to drink. All right, 
So we're gonna be using this kit from Rain Barrel Depot and converting this Coca-Cola syrup drum, we're gonna upcycle it into a rain barrel. This kit has everything that you need. It was provided with you for, with registration for the event. You can also get more of these online if you wanna share that with your friends. We're gonna go through quickly what was in these kits um, and what each one, what it's for in the process. So here um, it comes with a couple of drill bits for you to use. Um, there are three actually, and as well as a drill bit to attach them to. There are two sizes to drill into the rain barrel. The bigger one's gonna go up top and that's where your diverter tube, which is this, it's gonna go in up here at the top. And the smaller one inside here is gonna be drilled into the bottom for the little spigot and along with the spigot gasket. This little device here is used with the biggest saw thing for the drill. Not exactly sure what it's called to be honest. Um, and these screws, and this is gonna go into your actual gutter. Um, and we're not gonna provide a video on that because I don't have a gutter to drill into. I live in a condo. So um, if you have any questions, you can just give me a call, but this is gonna go into your gutter. This is for that, screws, boom. It also comes with fantastic instructions. So if this video doesn't really provide enough detail, um, this is gonna get you all your questions answered and you can give me a call um, or send us an email at the Watershed Council. All right, so first up on the instruction is to install the front fitting, which is where the spigot for the rain barrel is gonna go. Um, and the, from the kit, we need to grab the drill bit and the smallest red, I call it the circular saw, literally unsure of what this is actually is. I should do more research. Um, hole saw, we're just gonna call it a hole saw. Um, so we're gonna take the smallest one, take off this little uh, washer guy, and then this will fit really nicely. Uh, in there, pull it, make sure you pull it through. And we're gonna put this screw back on. Make it nice and snug. Okay, and then you wanna put this into your drill. It's nice and tight. And um, you could use this, this was included in the, the packets we gave you guys, or um, a measuring tape or ruler would probably be best. These are pretty accurate, but they are paper, so I'd recommend using a, a, another tool if you have it available. Um, this hole is gonna be 10 inches from the base. So this whole paper is 10 inches. So this is one of the taller barrels that we had and it's about right at this line and that's where the center of the hole is gonna be. Um, and you can use a, a pencil and mark it um, or you can just go for it. We're just gonna go for it. So with this drill, it comes a lot of microplastics. Make sure you're not doing this in a super windy place um, to capture all of these uh, as best you can. So now we have our front fitting right here in the uh, center of the, the rain barrel. And then the next one we're gonna drill, the next hole we're gonna drill is for where the water comes from your gutter, um, from the downspout into the rain barrel. And this is where you need to put a little bit of thought depending on where you're gonna put your rain barrel. Um, so you can put it on either side or on the very back. Um, it just depends on what direction you need to water from your rain barrel, where it's placed in your home. So this is, um, give, give some time, give some thought, and choose where you want to put this. I'm gonna put this one smack dab in the back. Should be about right up here. Let me make sure. Do, 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 do. Okay, and for this next step, we're gonna be using the second the med medium sized hole saw. And again, just put it right on there. Pretty easy. All right, and this, this hole is three inches from the top. So we're gonna use our little measury paper. Um, again, just because I need to make sure five times. There's the hole, center, put it right here. And you can do, you know, this doesn't have to be super precise. Um, three inches, we'll measure three inches down from, three inches down from this lip. drilled the holes um, 
for the spigot and for the collection system to enter. Um, we're gonna go ahead and attach the, the rubber gasket and the, the spigot to the front of our rain barrel. These are just, um, you're able to just slot them in, hopefully pretty easily, and they have grooves in them that you can use to screw the spigot in. If you have pliers or a rubber mallet, it might be beneficial for this set. There we go. And then this guy threads, it's got threads in there. This one just screws right on in. And then uh, with this, you can either just use it to fill a rain barrel or it's got grooves as well. You can hook up a garden hose. So now we're at the, the back of the rain barrel. We've got our, the hole we just drilled, um, which took a little bit longer. It's very thick plastic here at the top. Um, but to go into this, in this hole, we have this uh, smooth, groove and that's where our flexi fit diverter is going to fit into once we get it um, this guy plugged into our gutter our downspout um, this again just fits right in there and then when you get home this is like i said i'm not going to demonstrate this because i don't have a gutter to attach this to but you're going to use the biggest drill um, and i would recommend a pretty powerful drill this uh, drill that i was using seemed to struggle a little bit getting through this plastic um, so i don't know how it would do on metal but a pretty good drill Again, it fits into the drill bit just like the other two, and it's gonna be to drill a hole for this guy. And for this step, you wanna measure uh, from the top of your rain barrel, um, mark with a, a leveling tool, um, a ruler, a screwdriver, something that you can draw a straight line from the top of your rain barrel to your gutter, mark it. And then from there, you wanna do two and a half inches uh, down. And that's where you're gonna put the center of this um, hole saw, where the drill bit's gonna go. And uh, be mindful of what size your gutter is. Um, there are two different sizes of gutters that I know of. Um, one is a two by three, two inch by three inch, and one is a three inch by six inch or three inch by four inch. Um, and make sure that the three inch side is where you put your drilling the hole for this guy, because this is three inches. This will fit perfectly inside a three inch diameter. So you can put it on the side of a three by four or in the front of a two by three. All right, so once you have your rain bill ready to go, you're gonna get ready to put it up, ready to use it. So you, you need to make sure that these rain barrels are on very solid ground. Um, they get very heavy and they can be a little top heavy when they're full. Um, so make sure that they're on a stable ground um, and it's recommended to put them onto a stand of sorts so that you can increase water pressure, especially if you're gonna use a hose and it makes um, fitting a watering can a little bit easier um, underneath it. So a stand can be a fancy stand. You can buy it from uh, Rain Barrel Depot's website. There's accessories for these, um, but you can also just put it on some bricks. You could put it on a couple cinder blocks. You can put it on treated lumber, anything to give it um, you know, six inch elevation um, off the ground just to increase that water pressure just a little bit. Another thing that uh, we really recommend uh, to do is to paint them, either with spray paint or with an exterior grade paint. Um, and you might wanna give it a little bit of a sand first so the paint can stick a little better. Um, and that's due to the fact that these are a little bit translucent and uh, sunlight getting into the water can uh, allow for algae to grow, um, which can sometimes be toxic. Uh, so be very careful, be very mindful of that. And check the water quality. There's little holes on top of our rain barrels you can peek in and just see the, the color, see if anything's growing. Um, and if it does get to a point where there's algae or other weird stuff in there, maybe there's mosquitoes, drain it, and then you can clean it out with vinegar solution or um, a dilute solution of bleach, um, and it'll kill whatever's in there, and it's it's safe. And um, then you can connect it back to your downspout and get it filling. Um, and another thing that came in these kits is a sticker that says, do not drink. And this is just another reminder, don't drink the water, don't feed it to your animals. This is not treated, this is from our roofs. There's a lot of bird droppings, a lot of dust, a lot of grime. This water is not safe for consumption, but it is great to use on lawns, great to use on your gardens. And if you're using it on a veggie garden, make sure that you're washing those veggies really great, just like you would anyways, but be mindful of that. And it's not recommended to use this water on lettuce actually, because it's harder to clean. So place the sticker on there somewhere where you can see it and you'll remember, don't drink this water. So rain, rain barrels do tend to fill up, especially if we get, um, you know, we don't get a lot of rain here, but we get a lot of monsoons and we can get some pretty heavy rain. Um, this system is designed to allow water to pass through your gutter. So if there's a backup um, from this, through this into this, um, there's a hole through here. So water's gonna be able to pass through your gutter, um, but it is important to be mindful of a full rain barrel as uh, overflowing them can cause damage to foundations. Um, it's not good to have water pouring right next to your foundation, um, at least a whole lot of it. Uh, so be mindful of that. If you're going on a long trip, disconnect it. If you're um, 
you know, if it's full, you're not going to drain it for a while, disconnect it. And it's also recommended to drain and um, disconnect before winter so it doesn't freeze. Eagle River Watershed Council is a community supported 501c3 nonprofit here in Eagle County. We love our community. We're so happy to get these out.